Alright guys, welcome back to Channel Anderson. Let's go fix a G-Wagon. Well, this is not how I wanted this video to start. Oh man, if you guys could see on that opening pole, Seemed like when I was at the bottom of four, or top of fourth gear, it basically lost power. And it sounds like it's almost down a cylinder right now. Not good, and I don't have time to dive into this right now. So I kind of have to leave it here and drive another car over to the G-Wagon. But man, that sucks. It really sucks. It got me back home, but it was definitely not running right and definitely not on full power. It almost felt like the gearbox a few times, but you can hear it running. I don't know, it's hard to say for sure, but it doesn't, doesn't feel right, that's for sure. The gearbox does feel weird a little bit like fourth feels weird getting into it doesn't feel like normal and it feels like this is sticking and you can hear something oh, it's not good not good Well, welcome back to the channel, guys. Let's go fix another car, not this one, and pray to the gods that this is fixable on this one. I mean, it is, but hopefully it's not anything the worst. Sheesh. And I had a feeling for some reason this morning I should drive the C36 out. Should have listened to my feeling. I couldn't find the keys for the C36 at first, and that's why I took the C55. I mean, it was, it was pretty much warmed up, but I probably got on it too soon. I could have let it warm up longer, try to ease into it. I never really do that. That was just silly. I saw the on-ramp, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I don't know, we'll, we'll see what it is, guys, but we gotta move forward with the day. No crying over spilled milk right now. It is what it is. Play with all these cars. Things are bound to, you know, come awry with uh, the good times as well. So we'll see what it is. But anyways, let's head over to the G550. If for whatever reason it's the worst and it's the engine, we got a 113K. And uh, maybe it's destiny that it eventually ends up in the C55. I don't know. On the bright side, guys, can't feel too down on a day like this. Driving the C36 cruising over the water, blue skies, beautiful. Everything's always meant to be, so whatever's meant to be in this situation, <laughs> gotta let it be. Alright guys, well, all that in the books, we are back with the G550 here, and uh, we got our new starter, I'll show you guys everything here in a second, but not really much else to do, but unplug the battery and hop underneath and start trying to get this old starter out. Alright guys, battery is unplugged, you can undo just the negative cable if you want, I did both just to be absolutely safe, you know, I'm not trying to get bolted by a starter, so got my headlamp, let's throw in our light underneath here, and uh, see what we can get into. All right, and here is our new starter. Shout out to FCP Euro for getting this over to us. Uh, this is a Bosch, uh, what's it called? 986S00678. I don't think that's actual factory part number. Um, let's see if we got something else. 
on the box. There it is. Okay. Okay, maybe it is. But SR0811N. So, that's what we got. And I believe the reason I'm not recognizing this number, this interchanges with SR0827 and either X or N. X is for basically exchange or remand and N is for new. So this one might not be what you guys find for part number. If you're looking for a 550 exactly um, or 350 or any 272, 273, but uh, it is interchangeable um, looking at FC Piero. So I think we'll be okay, but obviously we'll confirm once we're down there and looking at everything close up next to each other. All right, guys, there's our view. I just got the uh, heat shielding off. It is sitting over there somewhere, but it's uh, two 10 millimeter nuts and uh, basically just swivel it around to get it off. It comes off in two pieces. So yeah, that's out. And then the backside is a 13 and a 10 for the two cables you need. Um, they look okay to get to. I possibly, I don't know, I might undo one try to like undo these front two and then spin the starter around to get to the back but i don't know I'll, I'll try to get them off first if i can and then uh start doing our bigger transmission bolts main ones all right guys starter is uh free free play at least uh i'm not able to get that back 13 out i so one wrench i forgot is my angle 13 wrench so i am uh not able to get that right now so i'm hoping i can basically fish this out turn it around and then get that nut off that cable uh should have some free play in it so i'm hoping i can get to it like that but yeah e14s are out on the transmission side uh they weren't too bad so basically now just begins the process of seeing how this thing is supposed to wiggle out and it's probably engaged, so yeah, wish me luck. All right, guys, starter is out, and for the record, you cannot get it out without taking that 13 millimeter off. The one tool I forgot is an angled 13 millimeter wrench. Oh, goodness, I will never forget that tool again. But anyways, got it out. Let's compare it with the new one. All right, here we are. Fresh one, old one. Looks like this one comes with a lock washer instead of a lock nut. And it also has, looks like copper um, studs on it. Versus this one also has a heat shrink on the uh, little power cable or a ground cable, whatever that is right there. So yeah, overall, I mean, maybe a few changes they decided to make over time. That little housing looks a little bit different on this side, but yeah, let's see if it fits. All right, guys, new starter is in. Uh, honestly, not too bad. If I didn't have, or if I had my uh, angled 13 millimeter, I probably would have been done like 20 minutes ago, but uh, that's okay. We got it to work with what we had, so that's good. Everything is cinched down tight. I'm going to go ahead and put the heat shield back on and then fingers crossed all right guys final look down here shield back on it was a little tricky but it's okay everything's buttoned up tightened up let's go upstairs all right guys power is back on we got our fixes we did last time and the starter here now fingers crossed man this would be a great win right now with how the morning has started come on g-wagon <laughs> All right, that is great. She's gonna be pumped. All right, engine sounds good, nice and smooth. Fully assembly, all looks straight. Sounds good. All right, idle down. I think I call that a win, guys. Let's go. <laughs> Big bad G back up in action. All right, boys. Well, job done. A happy G wagon later. Let's head out.
All right, guys. Well, we got there at about nine, and uh, we're leaving at eleven. So about two hours in the books. Probably could have done that in a lot less time had I had that uh, 30 millimeter wrench. But oh well, we're making it out, and uh, still got the rest of the day to enjoy. So let's head back home. All right, guys. Well, back home now. I don't think we're gonna get into whatever is going on with this thing in this video. That was an unfortunate start, honestly, and I'm bummed because I feel like I hurt my car and I love this thing and I feel bad for potentially hurting it, but uh, we'll see. Maybe this thing has a home sooner than we thought. Maybe it's not gonna go into a wagon or a truck after all. Maybe it's gonna end up in here, but I am uh, basing everything off of the worst right now, so I'm trying not to do that. I will leave that for a separate video, whatever the heck is going on with the C55, we will dive into it and it'll be in a separate video. But at least we got the G-Wagon sorted, uh, that's awesome, super happy to fire it up and hear it crank no problem and just be up and running again. So happy to help out. Kathy, thank you again for letting me work on the G. Uh, I told her in the future, let me know, like oil changes, brake jobs, whatever, whatever she needs, uh, I'd be happy to help. So yet to be seen what is going on. but. I'll catch you guys in another video. That's all. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.